So then, welcome back to Tech by Tech, and this, my friends, well, not this one, but this one actually, is the Samsung Galaxy A54. Uh, now, I might not be a hugely successful phone reviewer or tech guy on YouTube, but I am a long time Samsung user. I have a work phone, this Galaxy J5 from 2017. I have my trusting and trusty uh, Samsung Galaxy S20, the flagship from, uh, well, from four years ago, but which serves my purposes just fine. And I did own the original mid-ranger from 2016, the Samsung Galaxy A5. So I guess my opinion is as valid as any others in terms of what this phone has to offer and whether you should actually consider it in 2024. I will try to show its highlights and to point out some flaws along the way and give you, well, my take on what this phone actually represents. So without any further ado, let's get to unboxing the thing and to speak some more about what it has to offer. So then, the Samsung Galaxy A54. Now, in terms of packaging, there's not really much uh, <laughs> to be found. Well, typical in today's fashion, I found the, the phone uh, packaging to be rather lackluster and I uh, especially miss the, the included charger in the box. Uh, it's not that I mind the, the quality of the box itself and I'm not impressed by the, well, the if the box is expensive, but I, I do miss uh, having an additional uh, power brake. These accessories are not provided in the box, so really you can understand why you would need to spend extra money uh, buying something you may be expected to get out of the box. The quality of the phone, however, well, it's Really, it's a mixed bag, and I'm not seeing that in, in, in a bad way. There is, if you look at the, at the build and the materials, there is a slight bit of flex in the body. I don't know if you can actually spot it over the camera. I'm trying to film with two devices. There's an ever so slight movement and flexing going on along the along the chassis of the phone, though it's nothing to worry about. It's interesting to see how Samsung have, well, have adopted this mid-ranger um, uh, approach to the market. Now, initially, when I opened this thing and took it out of the box, I thought the back was plastic and the chassis was metal, but it turns out to be quite the opposite. So the chassis is plastic, but the front and the back are glass. Anyway, in terms of uh, build, uh, build um, quality and materials used, I don't really have any complaints on this phone, other than the fact that, well, it's kind of chunky and this more disappointingly so, there's huge bezels around the screen. I would have loved to see a bit of a chamfer to the glass and some sort of well, embellishment or a design artifice to inject some sort of uh, excitement into the lineup. This is just one slab of a phone and really <laughs> the camera bumps on the back are protruding quite, um, quite uh, annoyingly. So you have this movement going on when you set the phone on the table. Naturally, it's also a fingerprint magnet, so it would be advisable to uh, purchase um, well, um, a good quality case, though this will make the phone even chunkier, a thing which I don't really approve, especially uh, considering its dimensions. 
I will compare it to my um, work phone, my J5, and well, you can sort of see why <laughs> there um, there is a gap in the market for compact phones. So naturally, in terms of performance, there's the uh, ever so uh, impressive AMOLED screen from Samsung, and uh, well, eight gigs of RAM uh, should be enough for uh, everyday usage. Uh, if you're not a power user, you should be fine with this kind of performance. Another thing which is really interesting, and I think it makes of or breaks this phone, is the camera system, which should be pretty, well, pretty impressive. Um, I can't really compare it to my S20 since I have it here and I am filming right now with it. So quite obviously in a post-recording blunder I have found out that I had deleted the initial photos, the comparison photos between the Samsung Galaxy S20 and the Samsung Galaxy A54. Since the makeshift studio is dismantled right now and the, the, the conditions are not readily available, instead of trying to, uh, well, to falsify and to redo the whole setup, I decided to throw out a different set of very difficult lighting conditions for the phones to process and to show you these results side by side so you can determine whether the camera is better on the Samsung Galaxy A54, the newer model, or right, rather the uh, earlier flagship, my original Samsung Galaxy S20. And just to be on the thorough side, let's just throw out there some video shots as well. So you can compare the clips between the Samsung Galaxy S20 and the Samsung Galaxy A54. So other highlights of this phone include optical image stabilization for the, well, for the camera, which is pretty impressive in this price range. And I guess, speaking of the camera alone, this might be a, well, a serious contender to aspiring YouTubers or content creators or what have you. You wouldn't really uh, be uh, missing out anything as a beginner if you take this approach. Um, this being, a, well, I don't know, it's a European only phone. It seems to have only the Exynos variant of, of uh, well of a chipset um, it has the wait for it the Exynos 1380 <laughs> chipset a platform which runs on 5 nanometer processing uh, prowess <laughs> if you will yeah that didn't come out right but Anyway, you get the gist of it. It's only an Exynos platform, so some people might be put off by that. Uh, in my honest opinion, I never really felt the need to upgrade to a Snapdragon, though uh, in all fairness, I haven't really used a Snapdragon phone before, so I'm not the one to, uh, well, to uh, form, uh, to uh, express uh, this uh, opinion or preference. This phone is running on Android 13 platform with the obligatory Samsung interface. I forgot what it's called, but yeah, I, I kind of like this interface, this uh, skin uh, deep modification of the stock Android. I also, I always found myself to uh, get along best with uh, Samsung phones. I don't know why that is. It's my old school preference. I believe it some, ha somehow harkens back to the Windows days where everything was a bit more subdued, simplified, not too many, uh, not too many um, animations and really, uh, well, an intuitive uh, enter and exit sort of um, menu system. Other highlights that I could mention is the a battery which well it's a 5000 milliamp hour capacity battery and I'm pretty certain it's enough for one day and it should be better than my Samsung Galaxy S20 which struggles to get uh, more than 12 hours or so with two hours of uptime and uh, there is also the 25 watt charging uh, capability which is 
pretty good considering though this will not offer any wireless charging which I guess would be a letdown for me. I've come to expect wireless charging from a phone. On the other hand you have the always on display and the double tap to activate the screen not only by pressing the this power button or this home button as you had to do in the Samsung Galaxy J5. This has been my take on the Samsung Galaxy A54. Now on the one hand this is really a jack of all trades and is quite a performer. Unless you are a power user you won't be really uh, missing out on anything in terms of tech, camera, performance, battery life and so on. The build construction, the build quality also is quite impressive. On the other hand though I really dislike this um, these thick bezels and um, well this slab of a phone really they just uh, Samsung just copy pasted design languages from other manufacturers I'm pretty certain in terms to well to get with the flow to become more popular though they lost they lost this uh, well this uh, proprietary design this sleek curvature of the screen even the original Samsung Galaxy A5 from 2016 had uh, some chamfers to uh, add it to the uh, to the glass um, despite it being really curved there there are no interesting design cues anywhere to be found and really the dimensions don't well don't add to the functionality yeah it's nice to have a big screen and i imagine that many people enjoy it simply because after a certain age you get to wear uh, reading glasses and having a big screen helps with that um, but it's not something that's highly desirable at least in my opinion at the end of the day i think this phone is a mixed bag especially considering the budget it's priced at around 350 to 400 euros which is a good packaged phone for what it has to offer though i think there are other interesting deals out there to be found I don't know the exact uh, well the exact competitors so I will refrain from suggesting any since I haven't really documented that aspect. I'm just mentioning it that well I guess if there were a conclusion to be drawn with this phone is that it's not as impressive uh, as the original A5 from 2016. That phone really opened up the market from premium feeling but well, mid-ranger phones. This one now is swimming in a sea filled with same type of phones. Good or bad, I don't know. I guess I will let you decide. That has been it for me, I guess. And uh, well, you can draw up your own conclusions whether this phone is really worth it or not. So, Thanks for watching and I guess I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.